Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 323 of the daily, 333, sorry, of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah, 333. We're only half evil. <laughs> Although I did notice our YouTube on our YouTube page, our subscriber rate uh, numbers yesterday were six sixty six for about yeah, an hour. Me and too. I did six sixty seven. I felt like clipping that and going, "Ooh, this can't be good." Oh wait, no, it's dropped back down to six sixty six. So somebody we pissed somebody off and they left. Woo! <laughs> the number six sixty six. The number of the beaver. <laughs> That's how the lyrics for the Iron Maiden song went, right? Yes. Six, 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 the number of the beaver. Beast. I and I am a beast. Wow. You remember I'm that track? Host. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. wow. I didn't it's know you were an Iron Maiden me. fan. I'm not actually, but the, the 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 Iron Maiden song that I really like, however, was Two Minutes to Midnight. Well, that's a great because that was yeah. all over on Much Music. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. all over when it was on. But no, when, I, right. when I was younger, when I was younger, I um, wasn't uh, a big heavy rock or you know the late sixties, early seventies psychedelic rock fan mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. at all, at all. And all my foster brothers were like, Scorpions and Van Halen and Rat nice. and all of them. Right, and I was like, not at all. And then when the Beastie Boys came out with License to Ill, right, because you know it, there was rap, but there was like. You know, lots of guitars on it and then i actually liked the album i was like so proud i was going to them and say hey 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 i got something for you and they did not get it at first that of course you know bc boys became like you know yeah one of the best groups out there um but at first it was like yeah i'm not sure about that but it's like they kept on playing all that music all the time and i just did like i was into banana rama and erasure and pet shop boys and you know, Depeche Mode and all of them. So and you were the only one who didn't know. <laughs> I was the only one who didn't know. Yes. And now it's like, I'm like in my fifties, well, even before like thirties and forties. And it's like, yeah, scorpions. Yeah. I remember this when I was a kid, <laughs> this is good stuff. But I, I, back then I, I just could not get into it. Wow. I don't know why. All right. Ah, I'm your host. The, uh, not the Daily Beaver, the no, Eager Beaver pronouns, no. he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? And with me, oh, as always, as you can hear, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. We have, um, I'm not sure if you're working from home again today. Yeah, I'm still yeah. not well enough to go into the oh, office yet. Darn. I'm, I'm doing oh. better today than I was yesterday, but I'm still not there. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. It's yes. my sinuses, my voice, my throat. Yep. It's just, I'm not there yet. And yep. I, I don't want to get anybody sick, so. Yep. You know, I'm able to get, I'm not as productive from home because a lot of the stuff that I have to do in the office is hands on the equipment, but I have coworkers who are like, no, Paul, stay home. You're sick. 
and and actually yesterday in a meeting they're like why didn't you what are you doing here i'm like well somebody's got to do my job they're like paul you're allowed to be sick I'm like yeah but there's nobody to fill in for me they go that's really not your problem <laughs> which it's like i actually where i'm in, where i do my job is different than who i work for if, if you know it's like who who pays me is not who i where i work right because I'm, I'm a contra i'm in, i work for a company who contracts me to a crown corp the crown corp where i do my job are really good people who literally said to me you're allowed to be sick you know that i'm like yeah but there's nobody to fill in and, and contractually we have they're like that's not your problem like don't concern yourself with that you're sick i'm like yeah but i'm on the couch with my dog and my laptop i can i can get things done they're like okay but they're looking at me the whole time like you look terrible i'm like yeah i don't feel very good <laughs> but i do Jeez. feel a little bit better today than i did yesterday so you know step forward moving in the right direction and the mental health is actually surprisingly good and you know what i have noticed and i noticed this a few years ago before i started on medication is when i get really sick you, a lot of people's mental health can take a severe beating during that time and it, and to a certain degree it does but when i'm on the mend i find my mental health is rock solid because all i want to do is get physically better so all of the sort of negative thoughts and negative feelings and all the terrible things that accompany the beast that is depression and anxiety seem to be fended off while i'm on the mend and i can't explain that if it's a the brain is coming into chemical balance for the first time. It happened a few years ago when I had a, um, uh, I had contracted cellulitis somehow. Mm, I hate that. And I got that once. I was like, I'm like, is this serious? They're like, yeah, if you don't treat it, you'll die. I'm like, what? Yeah. I had no idea. So they put me on a pick line. I don't know if you know what that is. It's yep. when they make a small insertion right here in your bicep yep. and then stick a tube about a centimeter from the entrance to your heart and pump medication directly into it 24 hours a day for three months. And while I was going through that, we're in the pick line for three months, which, you know, can, it's a bit of a pain in the arse, but whatever, you learn to live with it. Um, I, I, I was in great spirits the whole time. I was super positive. I was at work and the guys are like, you got that thing strapped to you? And you're, I'm like, ah, whatever, we'll work around it. We'll figure it out. Never had a mental health episode during that three month period. So it's like when I'm physically failing, mentally I'm strong. When I'm physically strong, mentally I'm failing. Hmm. Things just won't balance for me is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, it's the curse. I, I, I was blessed with pretty good uh, genetics. Uh, so I have to suffer somewhere, right? We can't have everything. That's just simply not allowed. Hmm. Right? right? I mean, for my age, I'm in pretty good shape physically I think um I, I gotta get back to the gym full time because I haven't done that in a few years since the pandemic but it's not like I put on 50 pounds during the pandemic I the two months I was home I put on 15 pounds and then I went right back to work and lost it in three days okay because I was back to my usual physical right. activity so it's just as long as I'm moving around I don't put weight on and I have a very restrictive diet so I'm allergic to everything. I have depression, anxiety, and ADHD, along with a smattering of OCD in there too, which I've learned to control. But I'm just a, I was like, why do I have a, a loving partner again? I'm like, I'm just a ball of confusion. I don't know, man. That's what the world is today. Hey, hey. hey, hey. <laughs> uh, well, I've been having a, a couple of days, <clears throat> uh, good and bad. Um, I've already played my first tennis of the season. Mm, yeah. Our court has again. already. I'm sorry, what? Our, outdoors? Our court, yeah, outdoors. The outdoor club has already put up the nets. Yeah. And like, you know, everybody's saying, well, yeah, oh, spring is here for good now. That This is it. And I'm thinking, well, no, this is Canada. We can still get walloped in April and May, sometimes even June. Yes. And, it's but, like, and, and people yeah. are going, well, is it here to stay? And then my briefer sweetie told me the other day, he says, um, I saw geese migrating back like this. And yeah. my curve, my skip said, yeah, the ducks have come back too. And I'm thinking, listen, I don't know this to be true, but I assume that if anybody 
is going to know whether or not spring is here to stay or whether yeah. gonna, it's going to be migrating animals. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard Canada geese last night flying home. I was like, what? I was out in the back deck. I was over at Bridget's place with, because uh, we're trying to get uh, Lola settled into, because she'll be spending a bulk of her time at Bridget's, you know, be back and forth between my apartment and her home. Yeah. And uh, we're trying to get her settled in. And there's a whole other story there with that. <laughs> but about, I, I was out on the back deck with her and I'm sitting there and she starts looking around and I'm like, what? All of a sudden I'm like, I hear Canada geese honking. What's going on? Normally we don't see them until mid April at the earliest, maybe May. Mm hmm possibly may maybe may sounds like you know, sound like a song lyric <laughs> maybe may you'll come back someday maybe maybe, maybe baby may. i don't know <laughs> maybe baby baby <laughs> i was thinking of britney spears there for some reason so oh, baby, baby. <laughs> exactly <laughs> I love that. I got uh -huh. it. Um, so yeah she's looking around and i'm like i am hearing canada geese I look at my watch and I'm like, March sixth. Yep. Yeah, that ain't that ain't right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're really weird. Um. So, but but I won. Oh well, you know, congratulations. Like, good nobody could have. Nobody would ever been able to tell. I haven't played in the last couple of months. It's my it's Mark, who I, I play against a lot. He goes, "Are you sure you haven't played over the course of winter?" I says, "I swear to God, <laughs> like, not at all." Uh, because yeah. we usually have like very very close matches. Right. I walloped him six one. <laughs> six sets to one no six to one one set six games oh to one. one set six games. Yeah. okay okay you didn't you weren't playing a like a tournament sort of thing no 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 well no no the, the club isn't like even officially open like we can't even get into the change room they haven't uh, connected the water fountain yet right. okay so they're not <laughs> they officially the open up. the nets yeah. are up so people will play it's grass yeah. on the field play ball sort of thing yeah exactly so uh yeah Really? Yeah, hence the tennis racket behind me and uh, my Christmas Whoa. present from my sweetie, which was the tennis racket bag, so I'm no longer carrying it in a pack sack. Mm. And you got a yeah. Prince racket too? Uh, I had a Prince racket, but it cracked. The one that I have now is, um, oh darn, I can't remember off the top of my head. The one I have now is not a Prince one, but mm. the, the Prince I had was a hand-me-down from a friend of mine uh, mm. who I played with a long time ago, and I had it like for over 10 years, and um, I only had it restrung once because i always told myself was like well i don't even hit the ball hard enough to need it to get it restrung and it turns out that you need to get it restrung once for every date like if you play four days a week you need to get it restrung yeah. like four times during the season yeah. so i've been playing with like an unrestrung racket for 10 years you're, you're losing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but, but it, i thought because i was you know i couldn't hit hard i needed a heavier racket to get you know some power behind the ball so i went to our tennis club because I had noticed a little crack in the frame of my racket. And I says, I need a new racket. What are you looking for? I says, I have no clue. I've never bought a new one in my entire life. Every racket I've ever had was a hand-me-down. Mm. So the, the guy outfitted me with something that is so ridiculously light. I thought, like, am I going to be able to get the ball over the net with it? Yeah, because apparently it's all about the whip when you hit. Yeah. So you need a light racket. And I thought, well, I, I thought the heavier that. racket was helping me get the ball over the net. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's like the uh, the elasticity in the new hockey sticks. Like when you see them take their slap shots, they're hitting the ice so that when it comes up off the ice, it's got this snap forward movement. So they're getting much harder shots, which makes me wonder what kind of a shot would Bobby Hull have delivered with the new skates and the new sticks. <laughs> the guy was hitting 110 miles an hour in 1961 with a <laughs> two by four and, and, and two pieces of steel and some leather on his feet. Can you imagine what he could do with that today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kid Michael, I don't think I'm going to read that one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I can imagine Britney Spears doing that. I'm going to read that. It's science, bitch. <laughs> give me, give me more. <laughs> I'm feeling musical Amy? today. Yes, if you see Kami. Um, and uh, I'm... Uh, then there was a couple of things that happened that I'm not going to get into on the show. Uh, but when I was very, very sad the other day, um, it was as a result of certain things happening with certain people. And then uh, over the past couple of days, a couple of other things have happened with these people uh, that have uh, made me go, you know what, uh, that's it, ding, ding, this is my stop, this is where I get off. Uh, so I'm going to be making some uh, important changes uh, to my life mm. very soon. Uh, so, yeah. So I'm um 
I might be a little fired up and spicy today, kids, because there's um my um oh I'm sorry uh, you've mistaken me for someone who doesn't respect themselves. Button has been pushed. So um yeah, if you hear a little uh, additional uh, bit of caustic or acerbic in my voice today as I'm talking about certain subjects, it's because I'm bringing something that has happened from a couple of days ago into the show today. <laughs> I'm carrying okay. some emotion. <laughs> uh, I guess the first thing we should talk uh, need to talk about a little bit, um, and the other weird thing that's happening is that technology is still hating me uh, because, as almost everyone knows, Facebook went down. Couple yes, of days for about ago. an hour, day for about a ninety hour, minutes. Yeah. Yep, uh, and when that happened, Facebook booted me out of the Facebook app on my phone. And you so then I'm trying to get back in. Can't remember my password, so I'm trying to reset my password, which Facebook will let me do, but it is sending me a notification to acknowledge. Yeah, I know. To the device. Yeah, that is my phone. Yeah, which I can't log into. Yeah, to actually click on the acknowledgement. It's very complicated. So I'm in an infernal circle of hell because there's no live person at Facebook to ask. Yeah, no, you're you're basically screwed. Yeah, yeah, I know. So it's now very, I, can, it's I cannot use the Facebook app. Now I have to use Facebook on the web. I can still access it through the web on the phone. I can still access it on my desktop, but I can't access access it on my app. And it's like, dude, if I'm trying to get onto Facebook on my phone, maybe send the acknowledgement to my desktop. It, it's complex. Maybe. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Kid Helen says, kick me out of Messenger. Yeah, just like kick me right out. Now I can't get back in. Oh, well. C'est la vie, I guess. <sighs> Technology. Yeah, You're it can be a real pain in the life simpler. Right? <laughs> like you like dealing with Bell. <laughs> Kit Sean goes disgrace book. Uh, let's say hello to the kids this morning. Hello, Kit Sean, my friend, Kit Hugh, Kit Ellen, Kit Toronto, uh, Dan, yeah, Toronto Dan, who um, uh, had a, a really great reply. You know how sometimes we reply to tweets? No, thank mm -hmm. you for the engagement. Like, share, subscribe. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan had a couple of tweets like that the other day where uh, he saw some. Uh, drama or bs being thrown his way and he just decided to sidestep that and <laughs> and i was like well played sir <laughs> yeah sometimes um, it's best to just walk away and yeah. and you know in real life you, you, it's easy to walk away in real life from a situation like that but when you're online it's a little bit more difficult right so that's when you literally have to walk away by doing this nope yeah well online what what the strategy often is like to um can you emotional bait? Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Like this, yeah. Or to say something, move the conversation from the topic to a personal attack on you and then to get you to defend yourself. And, you know, and it's sort of like, for me, it's like, oh, uh, now you're talking. I, I see we were talking about this subject before, but now it seems you want to talk about me. I'm guessing that means that you have uh, said all you have to say about the subject matter. And since now you're now talking about things you can't possibly know anything about, because you don't know me, right? Uh, I'm guessing that this conversation's over. So good chat there. Thanks for coming <laughs> out. Thanks for coming out. Your your parting gifts are at the door. Yes, I guess you've expended the full contents of your mind with regard to this subject. So I guess I'm going to move on now because <laughs> I'm not here to talk about me. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah. All right. <sighs> You had, um, yeah, yeah, it's, um, there's some weird yeah. <laughs> stuff going on. Um, let's start with what you had in the description there. Well, I, I've got one minute and six seconds of, of her doing We're whatever talking, the I hell. I mean Danielle Smith, by yeah. the way. Uh, but uh, kids, if you're listening at home, if we're just like, oh, and now we're going to talk about her. It's either going to be Daniel Smith or Melissa Lansman. One of the other. <laughs> Today we got both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll start with Daniel Smith. And this is uh, from her radio show, um, Your Province, Your Premier, from 10 28 2023. Listen to this quotation from Daniel Smith. This is about uh, one minute and 
five seconds, six seconds. Just have a listen. Premier, will you go on the record and apologize to the people of Alberta for wasting an excess of $80 million on the weak, unused painkillers you purchased? Let me guess, she won't. You know, I think people have to remember what was happening at that time because we had a lot of supply chain problems. No one knew when we were going to get children's Tylenol, children's uh, ibuprofen. There were, uh, when you have a high fever of a very young child and you can't bring it down, it can cause a serious harm to that child, even even death in the worst cases. Mums were going on to Facebook pages talking about how they would be able, whether they could find some and whether they could swap it. People were, were going pharmacy to pharmacy. People were actually going to the U.S. and Mexico and bringing back product. And so that's the environment you have to remember we were in. I was asked to do something and we did. We found uh, another supply. We brought it, we brought it in. We alleviated the crisis, and uh, now we'll, we'll we still have a contract open with them for how we might be able to to continue to fulfill that contract on others on other um, on other services. But you know what? People expected me to act, and I did. Oh my God! She just dropped a bombshell. Uh, yeah, we have other contracts. The contract's still open. Yeah. She still has obligations. She's still forced contractually to send more money their way somehow for some reason that's why she's saying uh, but um uh, how exactly did she uh, uh, alleviate the problem didn't happen no didn't happen and and this is from the breakdown from nate he says this is you know from a few months ago uh, she was asked if she would apologize for the 100 million she wasted and knock off turkish tylenol i thought it was 80 million but, but, but let's not get into that yeah. her response nope then she claimed that her actions alleviated the crisis. They didn't. The supply chain corrected before her drugs even arrived. So that and then she couldn't use the drugs. Then she couldn't use them. because, as she mentioned, when you're doing things with children, it's very very important. And mm -hmm. when it comes to dosing medication for children, it's very very important. And there was no way to get the correct dose for children without like giving them one tablet and having to cut or, or cut. Or either it's give them one tablet and cut one another one to give a full portion, or just cut one. But when you're cutting by eye, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like you know one one ch more or less of Tylenol is uh, not a medical measurement. Well, and here's a commentary from uh, this uh, regarding this. So this this. Uh, was from back in October 28th and this comment was made on February 26th so just just a few days ago from uh well our hopefully uh we can get him on the show at some point in, in time uh, former Calgary mayor Nahid Nenshi and this is what he had to say Maybe she believes what she's saying, but it's not true. The federal government had already secured alternative supply when she signed this deal. No other province did what she did. And the last thing we need in an emergency is to panic and throw money at the lobbyists we see. That is what we call a shot across the bow, my friends. Mm -hmm. From yep. the presumptive Albertan New Democratic Party nominee for leader, presumptive. And the presumption is on everybody's part because he's not come forward to say anything about running. Or challenging for the position so everybody kind of wants Nahid Nenshi to take that banner but he's not said anything about it so time will come time will come and we'll find out what he's going to do if he's going to actually pursue that position we don't know I mean if he did it would be good for Alberta and people are going but he's not a socialist and neither is the Alberta NDP they're not the Alberta NDP is Joe Clark, progressive conservative, folks. If you don't know that, just look east to Manitoba at Wab Canoe and his NDP party. They are progressive conservatives of the Joe Clark era. You don't believe me? Look up his policies and look up Joe Clark's policies. They see eye to eye on damn near everything. This is the new progressive conservative party, the NDP. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm only speaking provincially in the West. Federally, the NDP party is a mess right now. We've discussed oh this God. time and time again. Uh, we discussed it just the other day with JB about that. Uh, you know, yep. and, and JB has said, died in the wool party member. And he's like, yep. we, it, 
it, it's a mess. It needs change. It, it's eating itself provincially in the West. It is a new progressive conservative party under a different banner uh, and probably a few different policies that are not 100% Joe Clark progressive conservative era, but so damn close to that. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yep, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Jim Johnston. <laughs> Ronald Reagan was a leftist wingnut by today's standards. Yeah, yeah, right. Nixon. Nixon. Yeah, he started the EPA. EPA. My God. Yeah. He would. He would have been thrown under the bus faster than you can say carbon emissions. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I forgot to. I was in the middle of uh, welcoming the kits, and I got diverted. So let's finish the job here before we go on. Good morning, Kit Linda M. Good morning, Kit Mohan. Good morning, Kit Jim. And we're just talking about you. Good morning, Kit P and C Bio. Kit Deborah, hello. Nice to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we mentioned Linda M. in Toronto, Dan. Kit Elaine, hello. Kit Cassie, hello, my dear. I hope you're having a wonderful Manitoba morning. Who else do we have with us? Kit Vim, hello, lovely lady. Thank you for joining us again. Kit Michael, my friend, how are you? I hope you're having a good day. And let's see, keep going down the list. There's a lot of people with us today. Boy, mm -hmm. and a, wow, the chat is super active. Miss Shattuca, hello, darling. Good day to you. Oh, there's a new, oh, no, no. Ah, Pierre Michel. So that's what PM means. Mm, Pierre Michel. Ah, okay. Bon matin, mon ami. And yes, Charles, if you're watching, um, I do owe you a beer. When you, when you threw that up yesterday in the chat, I was a little confused. I'm like, what? I owe you a beer? Yes, oh, well, you're right. I do owe you a beer. I was in the chat yesterday. And my friend Charles was like, you owe me a beer. I'm like, I, I do? Yeah, I owe you a beer. Yeah, I do. Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Why do you owe him a beer? It's not important. Okay. Kit Saucy, did you lose a bet? No, 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 no. no okay. <laughs> Kit Mohan, good morning to you, my friend. Hoping uh, that you had a wonderful birthday the other day. Kit Frank, hey, hello there. Nice to see you. Well, everybody's here. Mike H., oh, yeah. good morning to you. Kit Jen, Kit Mr. Cal. My what? I, I, you know what? It is clear that we are definitely getting more live viewers because oh, yeah. I have many more people to say hello to in the mornings than I used to. Well, there's, I'm just looking at the feeds right now because we're, That's we're on multiple platforms when we, when we do our live stream. And then when we, uh, when we send out the audio version that goes out to about 30 platforms, I think, Yeah. but the live stream is on at least a dozen platforms. And, uh, I was just looking across some of them and right now I'm just seeing there's about 420, uh, 420 just watching on Dean's, uh, Twitter feed. Right. So if, if you're watching on the Twitter feed and want to join the chat, you can you see that link across the bottom type that in it's uh youtube.com backslash at true north eager beaver media and that'll take you directly to our youtube page where you can join in the damn fam chat and uh, we can, we're building a community here of individuals who are from across the country and we don't all see eye to eye on everything sometimes we have some heated conversations in the chat but i'd say that every single person that is part of the damn fam loves this country loves democracy is sick and tired of the lies and wants this to be a better place for our friends, our family members, our community, the people we don't even know in our neighborhood, including our future children, grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We want to make a better world. And collectively, we can do this. We can do this together. But we need to get people online and engaged. I wanted to say engaged, but that's not a word. It's engaged online and engaged with uh, current situation in politics. You are being lied to daily. Yes, every single one of them lie. The problem right now is the leader of the opposition lies every single time he opens his damn mouth. The man is incapable of telling the truth, and it's gotten so bad that all of his members of parliament are now propping him up with additional lies. Yeah. They just lie upon lie upon lie upon lie upon lie upon lie upon lie to try and get you convinced that Trudeau is this evil demagogue that runs everything on planet Earth. Except the things that work well. Except the things that work well. Only the bad stuff is his fault. Especially the ones that aren't even within his jurisdiction, like housing, which is done at the municipal level, funded by the province, which has cut funding for decades. 
Trudeau has ultimate power. <laughs> but he can't do anything right. <laughs> Thunder lightning. Like, man, just look. And I tell people, look, hate the man. If you want to hate the man, go ahead and hate him. But hate him for his policies. Have hate him reason. for the policies that actually will do you harm. And which one are those again? Uh... <laughs> you know how much I paid in taxes last year? I paid $150,000 in taxes. Yeah, that's that's more than double what I earned last year. So you can shut your pie hole, okay? If you pay that much money in taxes, I think you're doing okay. That's the price you pay to be a member of a civilized society. You don't like it? Move the fuck out of here. We'll help I'll pack. help you pack. We'll drive you to the airport. Fuck yes. But you don't get to come back. We'll even buy you Have water it. so that you could have on the plane with you. You don't buy you one back juice, though. <laughs> you don't like paying the fee that it costs to live in a social environment and, and uphold the social contract our government has with its citizenry. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to, but you don't get to stay here and enjoy any of it. You got to get the fuck out and I will help you pack. Yep. Simple as that. Get the fuck out. Don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. There are millions of people trying to get here every day. And if you don't believe me, well, let's just take a look at the old uh, population clock. Oh, look at that. What, what, what was it last July? We hit that a new milestone. Too. We hit uh, 40 million people. And you know what? As of this very moment in time, right here in Canada, we're at 40,931,970. We're going to hit 41 million before July. So if you think Canada is such a horrible place, that you can't stomach it here and you need to leave because Trudeau's a tyrant? Well, bye. That's the great replacement theory. You're free to leave. We have other people that would love to take your spot. Was it? There's a whole world of people trying to get into Canada. Yes. If you want to free up your spot, no, it's no a neighborly problem. thing to do. We're, we're in a housing crunch, so you can move out your mansion. We'll divvy it up and turn it into a uh, a, a multiplex apartment building and, and you can go on your way. You can sell it to the state and, and you can move to a country where they don't pay taxes and you're going to have to pay for everything, including the police. Because if you don't, they'll rob you. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the countries I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. Indeed. 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 They, they don't get snow. Uh, yeah. So, we have uh, Daniel Smith revising history, thinks, trying to convince people that she did a good thing by blowing $100 million or $80 million on something that we couldn't use and something she couldn't manage to slough off to somebody else. And now that you have to pay some extra money now to dispose of. Yes. Yeah, because you can't just throw it in a landfill. Because Berta. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And all of that, the, the whole reason, basically... You paid one hundred million dollars plus disposable fees, disposal fees, just so she could own the libs for a couple of weeks in the media. It's it, that's literally what you paid for. Yeah, like this, she basically it was a partisan promotional PR expense, billed to you as a legitimate government expense. It was literally a misappropriation of public funds. Yeah, she should be brought up on charges for that. Really should. No, I'm serious. I'm not yes, joking. Yes, you really I say should. That. Like yeah. this when. You know, all these conservatives that talk about the value and the sanctity of the tax dollar. You know, it's like this. If you are a political party, just like we talked the other day about Rebel News, which is not mm. a political party, but they're going to or, the court or, system. Or a news. <laughs> yeah, or a news organization. But they're going to the court system and they file a bunch of these things. And then they say, oh my God, we got this claim. We got this claim. Send us money so we can help defend ourselves in court. And sometimes they don't even take it all the way to trial after they do that for a couple of months. And then they, they withdraw their case often. Yeah. That, that they've been known to do that. But uh, but they launch all these lawsuits that they market the hell out of them, saying we're standing for your def we're defending your freedom. Send us money, and they're wasting the time of the court because all of us are paying for court time and whatnot. Unless they actually bring the court case all the way through, and the court goes, "Why the hell did you bring that here?" Where's you know, it's like you're you're getting charged for costs as well. <laughs> Not only do you lose, but you got to pay for this having used us this way. Um, and just like the conservatives are using question period and all that type of stuff as a, you know, an opportunity to do PR rather than do the people's business and all that type of stuff. So yeah, lots of strategies like that. So uh, yeah, 
when, uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, <clears throat> when political parties start spending money, you know, on that type of stuff for actual, pl- it, it's hard to do because, right? Every party has an ideology, and every ideology, every ideology stands for certain things. So, for example, okay, the conservatives are against you know doing anything for climate. Fine, yeah. they're allowed to develop policies, I guess, like that, and communicate them on our dime and on our behalf. But when they start, you know, funding you know a war room to help promote oil and all that, that's literally a political partisan expense being sold to you as being something done in the interest of the public. And they're using the tax dollars to cover that rather than their own party fundraising, which is still heavily subsidized. Mm. But political parties in Canada legally are private organizations. This is correct. Which remember, they're not transfer. That's why, for example, Elections Canada can't interfere in party nomination races. Because it's not a public democratic vote. It's a vote within a private organization. And private organizations, so long as their rules are within the bounds of the law, they're allowed to do whatever they want and organize themselves however they want. Again, as long as they're observing the laws yep. of the land. and, and yep. you know. So, uh, yeah, they can put any, the, a political party can decide that they're going to choose their leader by, you know, Opening a box of alphabets and the first one that gets a letter Y in their bowl wins. Congratulations, yeah. Congra- literally, they could. And there's nothing that Elections Canada can do to stop that or because they are privately run organizations. Well, and one would also, when, when, when those rules were put in place, there was a, a, a level of um, political sanity uh, and human decency in the country. Mm. I would say that we don't necessarily have as much of that today if at all in some cases. I mean, mm-hmm. you tell me. What do you think? Uh, mm. Mm, some of them mm. out there, I'm like, mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if I, if I was true, a true megalomaniac, I would start a national political party. Mm-hmm. Judging. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to get rich? Do that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Or my own religion. Well, that's the other one. You can get rich doing that and never have to pay taxes, but then that makes you complete scum. Yeah. Because not only are you robbing people blind and giving them false hope, but you're also, you know, not contributing to society. Yeah. But they usually come up, but I'm saving people by taking money from them and not paying back into the system that, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you say so. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the other person that we're talking about is uh, Melissa Lanceman when we're talking about her because my concept about political parties being government-funded organizations applies. Um, I'm not exactly sure to what this was in response, but it really doesn't matter. Um, Oh, yes, I know what this was in response. Sorry. Uh, Faye Johnstone, who we're trying to get uh, to the show, but for some reason we're having trouble contacting her organization after she gave us a... the address to try and set something up. She just um, did a show with uh, David Mosscroft the other day. Yeah, so uh, I'm good. Good. trying to, to, to reach out again uh, to try to get her because we seem to have lost contact with the organization. Um, but uh, basically there was um, an article or something that came out and Faye Johnstone posted a tweet said, hey, Eric Duncan and Melissa Lansman, anything to say on this? Because let's not forget the Conservative Party has allegedly two openly rainbow MPs, mm-hmm. both of them, both of them brought in to PP's inner circle, the most, most inner circle, you know, like dep- the house leader and deputy leaders and whatnot. And when they had that little picture we saw on the stairs there about last year, yeah. the team leader, because Eric Duncan was there as well. Um, both of them are sharing benches with uh, Brandon Leslie and Garnet Genuis, who, uh, yeah, are pro conversion therapy yeah. and see yeah. no problem with that whatsoever. And um, so Eric Johnson said, you know, anything to say about this? Or does it not matter because it's trans kids rather than cisgender gay ones? Uh-huh. And then, of course, I'm guessing that Faye Johnstone has run an organization of some kind that received some government funding somewhere along the way. So uh, Melissa Lanceman decided that it was a good luck to be a rainbow person and clap back at a transgender person with this. Oh, boy, here we go. 
Pretty gross attack from someone the liberals funded with one million tax dollars. Value for money isn't there. You forgot to tag others who are openly gay and aren't Tories. Uh, the ones that are openly gay and aren't Tories aren't <laughs> aren't saying that trans people yeah. should not have health care or use public bathrooms or get to play sports. Never forget that government-funded radical ideologues are here to divide people. So once again, the conservatives just add radical or extreme to absolutely any occasion and hope that that makes it so. And what well, Landsman is correct here. Mm -hmm. We actually do have government-funded radical ideologues who are here to divide people. Yes. The thing is, is that those government, Canada. exactly, those government-funded radicals are not the people that run an organization that fight for inclusion yeah. for minorities or, you know, people who are vulnerable. It's the members of the Conservative Party of Canada, because as I mentioned, political parties are government-funded private yes. organizations. But they, they, they always leave that little tidbit of information out and want to put the blame on somebody else because they got to scapegoat somebody, right? I mean, you can't, you can't make it look good. Yeah. You it's can't like, tell the truth. You have to lie by omission if you're a member of that party. Is that when you get sworn into the party, it's I will do whatever the leader tells me to do and I will do it with um, absolute joy. Like, what, is their, what is their party oath? Do they have one? Is the, do they bend over, get down on all fours, get spanked in the butt and say, thank you, sir, may I have another? It's a cult, man. It's not a political party. It's a group of barking seals in the House of Commons whenever the opposition or anybody who is not of that political stripe stands up to speak, they all sit there like barking seals and try to shout them down. This is not a playground. This is the people's house. We pay you to be there. Become a better employee. Shut your pie hole and listen to what this person has to say. And when it's your turn to speak, you will be given that time. But sitting there in your seat, banging on your desk and barking like a clapping seal, and every party has been guilty of this over the decades, and I've yeah. hated it. I've always hated it. And I paint every party with the same brush when it comes to this. Stop doing that. There has been days when I've tried to watch um, Parliamentary Affairs Channel, CPAC, and I have to turn it off. Question period in 15 minutes in, I'm like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I've seen children on a playground get along better, fighting over something. I've seen them actually figure out how to figure out sharing. Yep. Okay, well, you use the monkey bars for 10 minutes and I'll use the swing and then we'll switch. Well, they don't say 10 minutes, but for whatever, you know. Yep. And I've seen children do that. House of Commons? No. We're right, you're wrong. Screw you. Stop that. Stop that. Stop wasting my money. I'm struggling as it is. And then you do this with my money? My hard-earned money? No, no, no. Not cool. Not cool. Yep. Indeed. Indeed. It's, yep. So, why is, uh, Melissa Lanzman, girl. Yeah, yeah girl. Keep, keep rolling. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I can't. I can't. I, I just can't with her. Um, and um, then we had... Well, I'll put it up. Faye Johnstone had written something as well that appeared in uh, the extra chain. Uh, if people are not familiar with it, that's extra XTRA, which is basically Canada's national gay newspaper of record. Um, there used to be tabloid formats of the, the paper all over. There used to be one in, uh, in Vancouver, mm -hmm. I believe, extra West, extra Ottawa. Uh, which was Capital Extra, then Extra Toronto, which was the original one. Um, full disclosure, I actually worked for them for about three months when I was in university in their advertising department. Okay. One of the best jobs I ever had, actually. Um, I'm not oh, sure yeah. if they have any hard copy publications. I think they're strictly online now. Um, but she published, uh, had a, an article, an opinion piece published uh, yesterday that said, the new generation of conservative sellouts. How long have we been saying on the show that Melissa Lanceman is a sellout? Completely. Yep. She was a lobbyist for Walmart. Yep. And I think, and, oh, no, no, sorry, was it Walmart or was it, was it long-term care homes? Or was it both? I don't know. She was a lobbyist for a lot of people. Yeah. 
Um, so the article, uh, her opinion piece goes, never underestimate the willingness of rich, cis, conservative gay people and so-called allies to sell out the rest of us. In the 1970s, some gay community leaders turned their backs on the less respectable, read transgender, weird, drag performing, poor, racialized, and or flaming members of their community in a cynical ploy to gain acceptance and power for themselves at the expense of their more marginalized peers. I mentioned this on the show a lot, that when we talk in Canada about gay rights, you know, a lot of us, the LGB, got their rights, and then we took ours, we kind of left our T, transgender mm-hmm. brothers and sisters behind, which is why the current prime minister had to bring them back in <clears throat> and include them in the, in the Constitution as a protected group. There's no better example that when in 1973 the New York Pride Committee tried to bar trailblazing women of color, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, from participating in the Pride Parade because they were giving the organization a bad name. That was like around the time I was coming out when everybody's complaining, oh God, we had the Pride Parade and they put a drag queen on the cover of the newspaper yet again. Why is it always the drag queens? And then certain other parades, they tried to ban members of the leather community because, well, you know, we were scaring the neighbors. <laughs> this decision by the local pride committee exemplified a broader trend where some gay activists sought to push out more marginalized community members to win respectability and influence hmm. pushing out more marginal members flash forward 50 years and history is repeating itself in canada canadian politics as anti-lgbtq2s plus hate rises across canada with even ceases sounding the alarm and trans lives being used as a political punching bag by far-right groups melissa landsman and eric duncan the two and only two openly gay conservative mps and other conservative mps who called themselves our allies are turning their backs on lgbtq2s plus rights Following federal conservative leader Pierre Polyev siding with transphobes in his opposition to gender-affirming care for minors, his remarks at rallies about so-called, quote, gender ideology, and most recently his comments in support of banning trans women from women's bathrooms, not only have Duncan and Lansman refused to speak out, Lansman so so far as to defend Polyev's comments asked about his stance by the Hill Times last week. Lansman said, as we reported, Quote, I think the leader has made his common sense conservative position very clear and our caucus stands by it alongside most Canadians. In 2006, under conservative leader Stephen Harper, it seemed like, quote, common sense to oppose uh, oppose marriage equality. Most Canadians opposed it. The whole conservative caucus voted against it. Lansman, after publicly urging the conservatives to shed their homophobia in a 2019 op-ed in the Globe and Mail, is now happy to support a leader who opposes the rights of some in the LGBT sorry, LGBT2S plus community, trans people. When the Hill Times asked Michelle Rempel Garner, who has historically been a vocal ally to LGBTQ2 plus people within the Conservative Party, she literally ran away from the reporter, Chelsea Nash. Similarly, Scott Aitchinson deflected questions on the issue. When I tagged Lansman and Duncan in a social media thread on expressing concern about Polyev's rhetoric two weeks ago, Lansman resorted to a cheap partisan attack on my nonpartisan self instead of answering my questions. It seems there's no low she won't sink to to cast a bad light on Trudeau. Ain't that the truth. As was done in the 80s and 90s with regards to gay people, social conservatives are using stigma, ignorance, and outlier examples of trans people being bad or messy, as all people, gay, straight, cis, or trans are capable of, to paint a misleading picture and to frame acceptance of a minority group as a threat to the family or to the safety of women and children. Social conservatives, by targeting those who are deemed most, quote, deviant or fail furthest out, fall furthest outside society's gender norms in this case trans people hope to turn the public against a whole queer community create a social environment poisoned against us and jeopardize the progress we have made i hope duncan lansman and the rainbow allies in the conservative party understand that the dangerous game their leader is playing sorry understand the dangerous game their, their leader is playing by kowtowing to the will of homophobes and transphobes, Polyev is fanning the flames of hate towards all queer people, emboldening bigotry and contributing to a culture of fear. We've seen it escalate in the U.S. and in the U.K. already. In 2024, we deserve a Canadian political landscape where the rights of minorities aren't partisan, where trans and queer people don't have to worry that a conservative prime minister might jeopardize our rights or contribute to a new era of homophobia and transphobia. Polyev is already leading in the polls. He doesn't need to punch down on trans people to win. 
But after using trans people as a wedge issue, social conservatives will hold him to his comments and push for regression on queer and trans rights if and when he is in power. I can only hope Lansman and Duncan, along supposed allies of queer people in the conservative movement, recognize what's at stake for the whole queer community if Polyev continues with his anti-trans politics and rhetoric. I can only hope that behind closed doors, if nowhere else, they're pushing Polyev to course correct. Polyev crossed a line by opposing transgender rights and echoing the rhetoric of anti-LGBTQ2 plus groups. Human rights shouldn't be partisan, nor should they be politicized. We need all of you, queer and allied conservatives, be you an MP or party activist, to speak up, because our whole community will pay a price otherwise. Shorter version, don't be one of those good people who do nothing. If you see something, say something. Yeah. Yeah. So a good piece uh, by Faye Johnstone there that I wanted to read into the record. So, yeah. And uh, let's not forget that uh, uh, Melissa Lansman has no problem um, meeting with elected neo-Nazi politicians. Mm Mm-hmm. To, uh, come here to uh, travel and, and visit and do some business. Yeah, the business of, of rounding up more Nazis. Look, people still get upset when I say they had a Nazi brunch, except didn't the European Parliament just rule them as a far-right uh, supremacist organization, if memory mm-hmm. serves? Yeah, I, I know that I know that in Germany itself, Bavaria, yeah but, yeah, but there was a second decision. I'm not sure if it was mm-hmm. the whole EU Parliament, but yeah. Um, but people are people are saying it out loud. I mean, there were like yes. even huge protests in Germany. Uh, I guess we didn't talk 000. about it on the show, but you know, there was uh, for a couple of weeks there. There was everything going on where people were turning around because the the AFD w- is doing relatively well in the polls mm-hmm. uh, over there, and uh, that which uh, brought a whole bunch of Germans out to say, uh, "I thought we said never again." Yeah. What, what part of never again did you fail to understand? Right. Yeah. So we have Daniel Smith not accepting any responsibility whatsoever for having misappropriated public funds and blown the hundred million plus what it costs is to dispose of Tylenol that uh, we can't give to anyone. We have Melissa Lansman attacking members of the trans community as being government funded hacks because uh, somehow um, I'm guessing she deep down internally hates herself. And self-loathing makes people do a lot of weird things, people. So does repression. And for the full trifecta, once again, we have Ma Parker, where have you been? Taken to social media to once again confess. David Parker, I have spent the last week reflecting on the premier's words. I have consulted with priests, pastors, mentors, friends, and many members of Take Back Alberta, and they are unanimous in their criticism. I weaponized my words instead of speaking the truth in love. No. That's not what they told you. They told you, such your fucking pie hole. You're a liability in destroying our movement, which I have no problem with you tanking your movement, buddy. We want you to do that. But the people that you're working with, who have a certain goal which I vehemently oppose, but they have a goal, say that you're not a good team player even for the team you're supposed to be batting for. Yeah. You're terrible against, you're a terrible person to the team you're batting against, but it seems the team that you're actually batting for don't like you much either. I want you to rein it in. They always, they always just eat their own. They just, they they really do. They eat their own. I weaponized my words instead of speaking the truth in love. So, no, 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 no. Poodle, come here. You're not speaking the truth. Your truth that you're trying to speak in love is actual hate, and you cannot speak hate in love, no matter what words you choose. Yeah, it doesn't. The problem is your message. There's no way to speak that in love. Your truth is the problem. It's not true. I have long justified my actions online due to the many personal attacks and threats levied against me. A constant barrage of personal attacks and death threats. All of my excuses are lies. No, 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 poodle. No, poodle. No, no. That's when um, 
I can hear my mother's voice from when I was a kid. And mom, he teased me at school. And what did you do? Did you earn it? I had nothing. What did, what did you do? Well, I may have called him a poopy head. Ah. Well, there you go. Ah. Ah. You earned it. You're a constant barrage of personal attacks and death threats that you uh, that are levied against you. Uh, it's a chicken and an egg, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're trying to convince that people that that's uh, the chicken that laid the egg, but really that's your <laughs> that's your egg. It's like you came online to talk shit and smack about <laughs> everyone you could first, and then people reacted. And said, you know what? We don't tolerate that shit here. And then some people who are doing things that and saying things that they shouldn't do probably levy death threats against you, just like the people that you post that shit to try to entice levy death threats against other people. It's like you didn't just pop up on Twitter and saying, Hey, I got lollipops and rainbows and sunshines, and people issued you death threats. You kind of you, know, you kind of did something first. You kind of brought so, it on yourself. Now, death threats should never be made no, under any circumstances. Cool like, but if you go out there and you're basically telling that there's a whole bunch of people that are evil and subhuman and don't even deserve to have rights, uh, don't be surprised when somebody turns around and says, oh, wants to end your rights. Well, when the leopard that eat people's face party actually eats your face. Mm. Okay. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying you shouldn't be freaking surprised. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's, it's what happens when you do that. It's, it's not like, right. It's like part of my crudeness, but it's like taking a poop. You don't know exactly when in the day it's going to happen, but you eat your poop when it happens. You're not surprised. It's an expectation. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, a poopy. Oh, who knew? It's like, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Gee, why did this happen? What did I ever do to provoke this? You ate. It happens. You yeah. eat your poop. <laughs> so here he goes. He's like sitting there like this. Like, I'm talking shit about it, everybody. He's, oh my God, somebody got chocolate in my peanut butter. <laughs> it's like, why are you surprised? Why are you surprised? Yeah. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has commanded me to love my enemies. I have failed at this command. I'm not even sure you love your friends. I have returned insult with insult and injury with injury. In doing so, I have brought disgrace to the name of Christ. Oh, honey, darling, that's that's, that's the least of the things you've done to bring disgrace to the name of Christ. I mean, come on, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. poodle. <laughs> bro, let's let's talk about some choices. Okay, the only path forward is repentance that means turning around and going the other way i will not use personal insults in my public communications going forward i am absolutely positive that if i stumble in this regard my haters will call me out for it so i will not use personal insults in my public communications going forward but if i stumble no when you stumble because you definitely are going to be using insults again because that's kind of your your that's who you are (laughs) right that's kind of your persona here like this so but Anyway, Christ has said, quote, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. I have not received these insults and persecution as a blessing. Um, you weren't insulted, persecuted, or had evil said against you because of your faith in God. No. Or Christ, you had them because you're a royal dick. You, you, you <laughs> brought it upon yourself, David, for being a shit gibbon, for saying things like, "I forgive Justin Trudeau for the provincial lockdowns that I was suffering under Jason Kenney, who you know implemented them, not the prime minister. I forgive him for that." Yeah. Dude, you're talking out of both sides of your face. Fucking just, stop it! Stop what, it! This is what I call in my six backup singers, the Mary, uh, Mary murderesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Chicago. Yeah, yeah that coming. <laughs> yeah, that coming. I'm not asking for anyone's forgiveness, even though I'm making a big, big, big spectacle in the temple here about how much I love the Lord. Let me sit not, but I'm not asking for anyone's forgiveness. Other people will have to decide whether they forgive me on their own terms. 
my actions going forward will speak to whether this statement is sincere or not. This is on March 5th, 2024. This is after he showed up on Dean's show, once again apologizing, saying forgiveness for things he did wrong, mm -hmm. which was a few days after he asked everybody from Take Back Alberta to apologize and forgive him for doing things wrong. We noticing the trend here? You the shit given stuff, uh, then you apologize adjust. and you say you need forgiveness and you haven't respected Christ, then you do it again and then you go on another platform and you say, oh my God, you apologize and you need forgiveness and you're going to respect Christ. And then a couple of days later, you go on yet another platform and say, oh my God, I've sinned again. Because you know the concept of serial monogamist? Mm -hmm. We got a serial confessionalist here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did something terrible. Oh, I feel so bad. I did not honor my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I promise I will do better. I beg your forgiveness. I will act better now. Oops, I slipped again. Well, hey, all I have to do is just ask my Christ for forgiveness again because he forgives everyone and it'll wipe the slate clean. But, oh, but oops, I did it again. <laughs> I fell over and I fell over again and I fell over once again. And Come on, man. We know it's a crock of shit. I wasn't supposed to eat the cookie, but I ate the cookie and I feel terrible. Please forgive me. I won't eat a cookie again. Oh, darn. What, what's this on my face? Cookie crumbs. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I could eat it. What's that on my shirt? The, the filling from the Oreos? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I, sorry I'm, a, I'm a sinner. I'm so weak. I'm, oh, look, I'm sorry, my dear. Like this, but you're, uh, I'm a sinner. I'm begging for forgiveness. I want to live my life in Christ. Act is, has worn thin. Mm, it's awful thin. Like, even God is reading this from his tablet and go, or, sorry, sorry, my mistake. Even God is reading this from her tablet and rolling her eyes and going, bitch, please. Well, you know. I could see God, that big black lesbian in the sky in a wheelchair, single mother with lots of kids. Oh boy, did you piss With a lazy a eye. <laughs> lesbian. Kind of looks like Oprah. Sitting there reading this and go, oh, bitch. <laughs> Come on. It's like, don't be talking. It's like, why are you using my name like that? It's like, get my, get my good name out of your trash mouth. <laughs> well. Oh, my God. We oh, yeah, have like Don Darling, who's former mayor of St. John's, responds with that. It would be best to get a standard deficient definition of what, quote, being Christian means today. <laughs> In my opinion, Jesus himself would be pretty embarrassed by the misuse of his fundamental teachings and horrific behaviors, excused away as something others that misguided hate. As something other than misguided hate. I just, you can't hate in the name of the Lord. Yeah, that's not how it works. Just saying. <laughs> and here's the thing as well, right? If you happen to be as religious as David claims to be, God either makes mistakes or God doesn't. So if you believe that God makes no mistakes and all of us are God's children, why the hell are you obsessed with hating on trans and gay people? Or people that don't share the same political views. They'll find a way to, to, to manipulate their way through that with words and sayings and things. And it's all bullshit. Well, it, it's either one, one or two things. Either you don't believe in God and mm -hmm. you're just wrapping yourself in it yeah, for show. Something to which God, I'm pretty sure, would object. Yeah. Or you are basically saying that the people you hate are not God's children. Right? There's not many other alternatives or options here. And what do the deeply religious or really, really like fundamentally whoopee whoop do there? Religious beliefs should happen to people who are not God's children. Because if we're not God's children, who's our whose creation are we then? Oh I don't know. Um, maybe could it be um, Satan? Uh, well, uh, loose, loose, and what do we do? Cipher. And now what Lucifer, is the Lou Cipher? Lou Cipher. And what is the prescription for dealing with the creation of Satan? Hmm? 
What's the prescribed solution? Think about it. For the umpteenth time, if you're on social media and if you need to make a point of saying that you are Christian or that you fear God or that you are wrapped in Christ, mm-hmm. you're not. No. Because if you were, it would be obvious by how you belay, behave online. Your behavior will tell people whether or not you're an actual Christian. You don't need to say it. It's like being a patriot. If you are, you don't need to say it. It's like being kind. If you are, you don't need to say it. It's like being smart. If you are, you don't need to say it. It'll be obvious. Well, should be. If you actually are, you don't have, if you actually are an alpha, you don't have to say it. If you have to make a point of saying you're alpha, trust me, honey, you're not. Mm. <laughs> you're really not. Jeez, what is well, wrong with these people? You know, that's the irony of it all. Right? Well, I'm an alpha. Really? Then why do you keep telling me that? Shouldn't we just know that by the way you behave? If well, you shouldn't I just are, like, you shouldn't, you know. Shouldn't I just be standing in the aura of your awesome alphaness and just basking in the glow? (laughs) That's why I picked Mr. Grizzly. Feel the alpha. Feel the alpha. It's coming right through the screen. Are you in awe of it yet? (laughs) <laughs> I kind of am because I think I'm pretty awesome, but that's just me. Well, I think you're pretty awesome too. That's why we have this mutual adoration society going on, my friend. Well, <laughs> so yeah, um, and then there was this. You know, I I almost don't want to give it any talk, but then there was an opinion piece that appeared in the National Post yesterday mm-hmm. by this opinion columnist named Amy Webb. And uh, I'm guessing that there's some actress named Sweeney of some kind who I'm not familiar with who's from a show called Euphoria, which wins a whole bunch of awards, and you tell me, but but I have never watched. And it seems that she was at the Golden Globe Awards. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. It seems that she was, uh, no, not the Golden Globe Awards, uh, on Saturday Night Live, and she was doing some skits because apparently, I'm guessing she's um, Dolly Parton gifted in the bosom area. Yep, that's the boo post. And uh, she put a whole bunch, she, she wrote this whole thing, this, and, and I read it. I'm like, huh? Like, I'm like, and then suddenly it's like, like, what? I'm not even sure what, like, there were words. Mm-hmm. Well, the beaver team not exactly a hard sure. time with it, right? They were like, we, we don't even know what to do about this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what it is <clears throat> they were trying to say, really, but it kind of boils down to, it's like, um, um, you know, not everybody is beautiful on the outside. And it's like, you know, it's like, I, you know, she, she brought out, she showed her big boobs and well, I guess she ended wokeness because it's like, and then pointed to the sports illustrated issue where we had the plus size lady who was in the bathing suit who Jordan Peterson said was not attractive. And it's sort of like, yeah, uh, some people find women that have a little more booty to hold on to at night. As Megan train and said, sang in her song all about the bass. Mm-hmm. Some people find them beautiful. Some people find people who are bald, beautiful. Some people find people who are hairy beautiful. But as a hairy person, I've had persons that fall in their lust with my body hair, and I've had other people go, ooh, body hair, Ugh. Yeah, it's <laughs> their own, right? Because I tried there to is read not the one universal standard of beauty. I couldn't get there through the isn't. article. I couldn't. I tried to read it, and I'm like, I just, I'm sorry. This is just, this, you can't be taking this a serious publication anymore. I'm sorry, you're not. 
when the Beaverton was making comments on Twitter last night going, we, we, don't, we don't know how to respond to this. We don't know what to say. Yeah. It's, just, we, it's, it's absurd to a level that we did not imagine anybody would actually, in a yeah. pseudo-serious journalistic role, write something like that. Yep. Yeah. So one person <laughs> tweeted this as a response because I'm like sitting there going like, this opinion literally makes no sense. I'm not even sure what the point was. And somebody responded with this, which literally is bang on. Bang, bang, bang on. It's basically a GIF. Do we say GIF or GIF? I never know. Have we agreed on that yet? I don't. I just, just, <laughs> uh, Somebody set the standard. You say tomato, <laughs> I say tomato, potato, potato. Let's call the whole thing off. I don't know. All right. If you could put that up. Sure thing. And I've got That's, the I've got the, the uh, Beaverton commentary for you here as well. All right. Here we go. Just, it's all about the clicks, baby. Mm -hmm. So basically... We have this actress, Sydney Sweeney, and um, I'm guessing that this is the same thing that's going on here as, um, I'm going to call it the Taylor Swift effect, where these people that write a whole article about something, and then somewhere in the, the article gratuitously put the name of Taylor Swift in it, mm -hmm. and then use a picture of Taylor Swift, and then yeah. put it on it promote the article and then you read the article and it's really not about taylor swift or anything with taylor swift she's just like bitching like something like taylor swift so it's thrown in so that people will click on the article mm -hmm. because i have no idea what it is about this woman appearing on saturday night live with breasts showing making jokes about how big her breasts are that ended wokeness in any way we of the woke would be sitting there and going yeah i mean if you want to show your breasts go ahead that's your right they're your breasts you do with them what you want the Beaverton's <laughs> immediate comment on the post national post article from amy ham we're trying to come up with something stupider than this but it isn't easy mm. but they did come up with something and it's really good editorial five ways to use your huge bazongas as literal weapons in the woke war by the national post <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is this is good. I'll go straight to the article here. Oh my god! Um, let's scroll down. I gotta blow it up so we can see it on the screen. I will read it for the listeners. Yes, please. Let's go. This is gonna be funny. Uh, let me just blow up the other screen here, and here we go. So, by the National Post, you heard it here first, Canadians. The death of wokeness lies in a gorgeous set of organic, locally sourced bazongas. We at the National Post have compiled a full list of military-grade tactics to make sure that the big naturals, cha-chas, and knockers you know and love can be used as weapons in the woke war. After all, you might not be Sidney Sweeney, but you can still serve. 1. Smothering. Take it from us, a group of mostly middle-aged white males, there's nothing that smothers our faces and enemies more effectively than a good old pair of lady honkers. If Ben Shapiro had giant mommy milkers, America would have elected him president already. And if he had used those milkers to brutally smother the woke Antifa plaguing our schools, churches, and sewers, see our previous post article for context, we would have won the goddamn woke war already. And may I interject here that as a gay man, this, I too appreciate, I very much appreciate a healthy pair of bazongas. In fact, when I go to many, many events in the leather community where I see some lovely women that are wearing bustiers and have them popped up, I always ask for permission to say hello to the girls. Hello? Mm, hello. It's, it's no secret. They're Game soft. Love they're boobs. nice. Oh, yes. Boobs are great. <laughs> Two. Striking. The left may have guns, fists, and mean science words, but you know what they won't see coming? Your glorious shoulder boulders, boulders appearing out of just fucking nowhere to slap the woke right out of them. Hit from even one of your old tig old biddies is bad enough, but two, those woke actors of SNL are as good as fired. Mm. Three, distraction. It's a known fact that in anti-woke circles, there's nothing that makes a lefty's head turn faster than a sweet, sweet duet of milk monsters. Mm. Why? Because they yearn for what their flat woke chest will never have. Get a line of biological, this is so important for reasons we can't actually justify, ladies with melons the size of Jupiter's moons to swing them around every which way and those pinkos won't see our forces coming. 
And may I announce that Sesame Street has just told and informed the world that they're going to introduce their newest Muppet, mm-hmm. Milky Monster. M is for Milky, is good enough for me. Milky, Milky, Milky starts with them. Really? So does motorboating, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's very distracting. Number four, crushing. All we need to say about this one is that absolutely nothing can survive being absolutely shattered under the weight of two fabulous fun bags. Pete from accounting told us he didn't like Chappelle's last special and two minutes later, boom, he was in pieces after a fucking beautiful memory slam from Janet, our 62 year old secretary. (laughs) Memory slam. (laughs) Five bombs. Ladies, if you love Pierre Polyev as much as we here at the national post do impossible, you'll make the ultimate sacrifice. Swap those implants for literal grenades. Lure one of the uh, liberal elite into your lair, pull the pins, and watch those socialism worshipping scumbags explode. We thank you for our service. So, in the words of our Lord and Savior, Jordan Peterson, if you've got them, flaunt them, or else the authoritarian tyrants who dictate who and what we are legally allowed to find personally attractive will break down your email in the middle of the night and make you take mandatory social media classes. <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty brilliant. Um, I'm not so, lie. Also, if we're believing this, that a big boobs and wokeness, somebody tell better tell Dolly Parton and she's been doing it wrong for the last 50 years. <laughs> Because yeah. I'm guessing you're not supposed to fund literacy programs if you got big bazongas, or or donate a million of your own dollars to vaccination research for the COVID vaccine. Actually, yeah. was it ten million? I don't know. She donated millions. That's all I know. Uh, so um, we have um, Kit Patty here, who I believe is new to the chat because I've not seen the name before. But I love this. I'm happy with my flatbread honkers because I'm still planking at my tender age of almost 69. Woot, woot. Betcha Swift can't do that. <laughs> Patty, you're my kind of people. <laughs> yes, yeah, I like that. That's good. That's good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd love to plank, but I can't. My bosoms are too ample. <laughs> they, are, they enter a room five minutes before I do. <laughs> well, no. <sighs> Yes. So in short, kids and cubs, boobs are great. (laughs) We like the boobs. Everybody likes boobs. More boobs, please. (laughs) Even the gays are going, yay, boobs. It's true, though. It really is. It's 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 not a lie. Uh, I've never met a gay man who said, oh, boobies. No, they don't. That never happens. No. Never. And you happens. know what? One of the best advantages of being gay. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. One of the best advantages of being gay is that if anybody ever gets implants, mm. because they always go to the gay gay friends that feel them. They feel real. <laughs> <laughs> Trust. As a gay man, I felt up. I probably felt up more boobs. <laughs> an old I heterosexual man. Did I ever tell you the story about... Um, Membership has its privileges. <laughs> a time when a group of friends uh, and, and another friend of mine, she was from a small town and had never been to a gay bar. So one night we took her to Icon and we're parking mm. across the street. And as we're walking in, there's a big lineup and people are waiting to get inside and there's the patio. And as we're walking towards the place, she yells at the top of her lungs, I can't believe I'm going to a gay bar. And everybody just sort of what the hell? I'm like, she's from a small town. She doesn't get out much. This is her first time in the city. They're like, oh, okay, okay. So we get in there and uh, go upstairs and we're on the, the third level and, and the girls are dancing. And uh, my sister goes to use the washroom and there's four guys in there doing other girls' hairs. And she's like, right. what the hell's, <laughs> what the hell's going on? And uh, a friend of mine, uh, I'm, st- I'm just sitting at the bar having a beer. And a friend of mine comes over to talk to me. And my small town friend sees this. She's like, oh, no, that guy's hitting on Paul. And she comes running over to grab. This is my friend Paul. He's my boyfriend. I'm like, it's okay, sweetheart. He's, he's a buddy of mine. I know him. We've known each other for years. He works with my mom. She, he's, he's like, yeah, it's, I'm not hitting on Paul. He's like, oh, okay. I go, it's fine. You can, you can go back to dancing. 
So I'm sitting there talking to, to Danny and a couple minutes later, a couple other lady friends of mine, uh, arrive. And, uh, one lady friend who has very large breasts, like that's the first thing you see when she walks into a room. I, it's she's Marilyn Monroe. Mm. That's how she's built. Oh, natural Island girl. She walks in, she goes, Oh, Hey, how's it going? How's it going? She goes, Oh, I, I just got my nipple pierced. I go, Oh, cool. Let me see. <laughs> Comes out this yep. know, bigger, bigger than my head <laughs> right in the middle of the bar. Right. And my buddy Danny's sitting beside me at the bar looking at this and I go, Oh yeah, that's great. Is that Emerald? She goes, no, it's, it's, uh, it's blood. Anyway, it was a green stone uh-huh. thing. It was okay. really pretty. I'm like, ah, cool. So she cup, cups that back away. And her friend starts flirting me, with me like crazy. This is over 30 years ago. This is in the 90s. Well, not 30 years ago, 1998. So what's okay. that, 26 years ago? Almost mm-hmm. 30 years ago. And her friend starts hitting with me, hitting on me pretty, pretty hard. And she's like, we're going here later. Can you, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come meet you. The wall. Like, you got to come. You got to come. Then gives me a big kiss and away they go. And Danny sits there and he looks at me. He goes, let me see if I get this correct, Paul. I'm a gay man in a gay bar. You're a straight man in a gay bar. Yep. And I start talking to you. A woman runs over to pretend she's your girlfriend so that you don't get hit on. And you're like, no, that's fine. Another friend of yours shows me, shows you her giant naked boob in the middle of the bar. And this other girl just picked you up. I'm like, yeah. He goes, I'm the one supposed to be doing that. It's my bar. <laughs> he goes, this is not fair. I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm having a pretty good night. Eh? <laughs> yep. That happens to me when I go to straight bars. For the record, for the record, I met the ladies at a party later. I didn't hook up. If that's yeah. anybody's, I know somebody was wondering. No, that never happened. We, I didn't, I wasn't interested in her. She was a lady that I knew. She was friendly and. She had a lot to drink that night and got a little flirty and I didn't take advantage of it because I was not in that same plane. So well, just, I just want to clear the air on that one. See, the reverse happens to me when I go to straight bars. I go there with a bunch of girlfriends. Mm-hmm. I guess we're all on the dance floor and we're dancing. Like and mm-hmm. then the one or two other gay people who are in the bar with their other girlfriends spot me and then we get to talking and uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not as noble as Mr. Grizzly. <laughs> I took advantage of that shit. <laughs> I'm no angel kits. <laughs> but it's a yes, you it's it's amazing the the number of times you could be a straight man going into a gay bar and actually end up <laughs> finding people who are of the opposite gender. Who are interested in you and vice versa being the gay guy in the straight bar and still is like wow really here never thought <laughs> never thought i'd meet someone here but hey okay Jim, coming <laughs> in with a with a rocket here every bar is a gay bar some just have really big closets Ooh, it's a good one buddy that's a good one yes because that's not a lie actually it's not a yes. lie there was a time it actually was true too yeah, every no, bar absolutely. I literally was a gay bar because there were no gay bars. <laughs> yeah. No, it's that's yeah. Oh, relax, my darling. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm having a or a straight man going to gay bar with his wife and getting hit on by all the guys. It's like, ooh, you're cute. Mm. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, nine times at most of the time, all it has to take. Sorry, I'm straight. And oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I, I have gotten that look sitting at the bar having a beer. Somebody just walks up and looks at me and goes, I can smell the breeder off you. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm not having kids, man. <laughs> but you could. <laughs> so could you. <laughs> right? <laughs> you could be one too if you wanted to be. You don't even have to follow through with the actual physical act. You can just donate, man. So, like, if you have a penis, you could be a breeder, period. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the equipment comes standard. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Have we delved into the gutter? Did we dive into the gutter this morning? I don't know. Oh my god, it's like we're having a Friday show. <laughs> yeah, on a Thursday. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, sorry, Dan. Lola's not here this morning. She's at Bridget's place, so I can't I can't uh, I can't show you to her today. But perhaps we'll bring her over and 
on the weekend. I think she needs to get, because because she'll be spending time between both of her places. So I'm trying to get her accustomed to her new environs. And, um, you know, it's the poor thing. She's three years old. She was abandoned. She's a, a, a American bulldog with some uh, Dogo Argentino in her. I, I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. And you can see it clearly when you look at both both breeds. You can see, oh, yeah, there's a mix of the both. But she was abandoned at three years old and left in a shelter for four months. So we've kind of turned her life upside down in just a couple of days. But the, the weird part is she imprinted on Bridget and I so fast. We're, we're both kind of like, how the hell did that happen? Like, I mean, so quickly. Mm -hmm. She is fiercely protective of the two of us. If anybody comes near us, she's ready to tear their head off. And I'm like, okay, we got to get that out of her. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to get her to calm down so that she can be a little bit chiller and mellower and, and 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 she is she's such a sweet little girl but she you know her life has been picked and flipped upside down so it's going to take a little bit of time for her to adjust to her new environment you know it it, it doesn't happen overnight so you know we'll we'll work it out i mean yep. she might she might spend a little bit more time here than we initially planned but that's okay that's yep. fine i love her i i i, I want her to stay with us and have a happy home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We love our Lola. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't wait to meet her. I can't wait. To yeah. Meet she's her. American bulldog and Dogo Argentino is, is the mix that she is. Right. Yes. All dogs need socialization. You're right, Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. So, um, briefly, <laughs> um, here. Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> oh. So, um, yeah, yeah, dogs are better than people. Yeah, yeah, Very cute. Sometimes plants are better than people, too. <laughs> Just saying. I don't, know if, uh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody happened to, to catch James' show last night. James did a show on Black Bolt. Oh, yeah, Bridget was on the show. Yeah, it was a, it was a last minute thing, and uh, I didn't get to see all of it because. Uh, it started late, and I went to bed because you know, I'm still fighting off this bronchial infection. So I get, I did get to watch some of it. I'll watch the rest of it later, probably this evening, because I won't have time today. I got a busy day ahead of me. But uh, yeah, just if you get a chance, check out James's show. He did a, a show with Bridget last night. Excellent. I will do that. Um, so it, briefly, in other news, Frank Caputo, that MP that says he saw the rink and whatnot, um, and I'm not going to say more than this, decided in the face of all this obvious evidence that he lied. Um, well, you know, went to the microphones and the cameras and apologized for his error. And no, that didn't happen. He doubled down. <laughs> Heavy so, on outrage, um, light on facts. Yeah. So just so you know, he's being the standard conservative, he was given the paper and told what to read, and now he's doing that. Yeah. Speaking... <laughs> of conservatives, um, Jamil Giovanni. Oh, I'd like to show a couple, of two tweets to you about... What an arse this guy is. I know. I didn't want um, to go there, but I'm sorry. The guy has no idea what yep. man is. Uh, no yeah, class. None, zero. Okay. All right, let me put so this up. This is, you. yeah, uh, as the person who captioned this, picture one, pure class, picture two, pure ass. Yeah, so picture Justin one Trudeau. is Justin Trudeau uh, upon hearing the news that Giovanni won. Congratulations, Jamil Giovanni, on winning yesterday's by-election. Let's work together on the issues that matter most to people across Durham. And thank you to everyone who ran, including our own Robert Rock Durham. You have been an outstanding leader for the people of Durham. Right. There's a little more to the tweet, but that's yeah. essentially the gist of it. That's the gist of it. And now, kids and cubs, Jamil Giovanni. Yeah. Dear Justin Trudeau, Durham sent you a message today. Did you receive it? Best, Jamil Giovanni. Okay, the best is a little passive aggressive in here. Uh -huh. The same. What an arse. <sighs> what an arse. Right? Like, he, come on. He's a sore winner. Like, and, and what was the message? 23% um, of the populace came out to vote, and you got the majority of that in a con stronghold that's been that way for 25 years now i'm probably going to go to hell for showing this but um mark yeah. burry 
Oh yeah, but, but did you see Mark's clap back though? Let's we'll start with this. I Mark remember Bury. this image from the National Enquirer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> our our, uh, our friend Mark Bury, friend of the podcast, uh, friend of Cryer Media, and, and and a good fella, um, great author by the way. If you haven't read Great A Big Man Fear Me, pick the book up and read it. It's a great book. No, okay. yes. Durham welcomes <laughs> its new MP. I'm. <clears throat> It's the, uh, what was it, the demon baby boy from the National Enquirer from about 35 years ago or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Now, um, it, think, of, think of Count Olaf from the Nosferatu film, if you are, know what that is. So, uh, Kiss and Cubs, um, if, um, yeah, Bat Boy, exactly. Bat Boy. That bat boy. Yeah. If um, uh, that sound you just heard in the background is an extra shovel full of coal going onto my pile. <laughs> <laughs> for having shown that <laughs> i've been a bad beaver oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oddly i don't feel guilty at all <laughs> you're not gonna see me writing a tweet asking my lord and savior for forgiveness for having shown that it's like yep i did that <laughs> i own that not exactly ashamed of it either if that makes me a bad person oh well i guess i'm gonna own that <laughs> <laughs> there's a tweet from bonnie crombie from last night that i don't know if you've seen this but i'm gonna i'm gonna share this because this is what we say in in, in the game uh, shots fired and she did not hold back on this she was polite but did not hold back so this is from bonnie crombie last night on the twitter and i'll read it out to you Doug Ford wasted time and your money fighting our health care and education workers, exacerbating, exacerbating the crisis in our hospitals and the neglect of our schools. And he refuses to apologize for his failures. Now, the story in the Toronto Star is the cost of Doug Ford's failed wage restraint legislation tops four billion dollars. Four billion because he didn't want to pay people. It's cost us four billion dollars. Now remember, the difference between a million and a billion. One million seconds is twelve days. One billion seconds is thirty-two years. So four billion dollars of our money that he is pissed away because he didn't want to pay people proper livable wages yep. for the job that they do in healthcare and education. Two of the most important portfolios, one would think, in a in a provincial government. Healthcare, yeah, that's pretty important because that covers every living, living breathing soul. Education, uh, that's our future. An educated populace is one that will build a good country in the future. So does he want to keep people in the dark or does he just want to fund private schools like Danny Smith is doing in Alberta by giving how many hundreds of millions to um a charter school yep. oh, didn't didn't she work for that charter school at one point in time in the past i believe that she did mm. Mm. so it's um get me elected and i will help you out it's yep. a mea culpa not a mea culpa it's a quid pro quo is what it is yep yep indeed uh speaking of doug ford um, it seems that um, the Republican governor of the great state of Etobicoke is really going into his uh, Republican narrative because the other day um, he mentioned that he has a right to choose, quote, like-minded conservative judges as he was defending his installation of two former senior political aides on the government's Judicial Appointments Committee. Mm -hmm. one of the wonderful things about canada and one of the big things that makes us different from the united states is that we do not politicize our courts exactly the supreme court in the united states we know how they're going to rule on everything because oh well, you know it was a rubble republican appointed justice i mean we even had mitch mcconnell who has announced that he is going to step down or not run again for the leadership in the senate the thing that he'll go down in history as being the most famous for mm -hmm. is holding up the Supreme Court nomination, 
that should have been President Obama's to make in order to put in a Republican conservative judge who would overturn Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. Right? So Doug Ford is saying, hey, yeah, yeah, I have the right to stack a judicial appoint uh, appointments committee with people who will appoint like-minded judges. And I'm guessing that um, if you are someone who has transferred about $8 billion of public wealth to a bunch of insiders and there's a criminal investigation going on into it, and if you were really, 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 well, let's put it this way, if it was you yourself in the mirror, you know that you broke the law. Mm -hmm and you know that there will be charges coming at some point, you're pretty darn sure of it, and you're pretty darn sure that you did do it, so if it ever does go to court, you know, you might be in trouble. Yeah, I could see why you would like to have like-minded judges mm -hmm. who believe that it's okay to transfer $8 billion of wealth or to sign sole source contracts with Staples and Walmart or any of the other various deals to which he's put his signature on in the name of the people of Ontario that uh, end up shuffling big, 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 big wads of money to people who probably should not be getting it. You think? Lawyers, groups, and opposition politicians raised alarms about the Premier's comments. Um, I guess I'm going to say that this is last Friday, saying they amount to a rejection of judicial independence, undermine public confidence in the courts, and set a course towards U.S.-style partisan justice system. This is as we reported in the Globe and Mail. Mr. Ford was unrepented when asked about a Toronto Star story that his government had put two of his former senior political aides on the province's Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee, which vets and shortlists candidates for Attorney General Doug Downey to name to the Ontario Court of Justice. Quote, we got elected to get like-minded people in appointments. Uh, no, you did not. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not why you got elected. That's not how you, it you didn't run on that, and nobody said, "Hey, yeah, we want you to be the premier, so that you could stack the provincial courts with people who think exactly like you." That 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 never happened. So he told this to reporters at an unrelated announcement in Brampton, asserting that it was, quote, part of democracy to appoint judges that agree with the governing part. No, 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 it, it is not. Quote, I'm not going to appoint some NDP or some liberal. I've made it very clear where I stand with judges, justices of the peace, and judges. They are letting criminals out. The prime premier went on to describe what he says are incidents from the recent wave of auto theft, saying that thieves who were, quote, kicking in doors, putting guns to people's heads, were then released on bail eight times. How would you like it if someone kicked your door in and put a gun to your head and all of a sudden you find out that the criminal that did that is out on the streets the next day? It's unacceptable, Mr. Ford said. So every single appointment I can to find tough judges, tough JPs to keep guys in jail. And guys say guys because 99% are guys, 99.9% .9 are guys, I'm going to do it. Ontario Liberal leader Bonnie Crombie issued a statement warning of, quote, U.S.-style politicization of our courts, calling Mr. Ford's comments, quote, an alarming affront to legal and democratic norms and demanding the reversal of the committee appointments. The Federation of Ontario Law Associations, an umbrella group of 45 local, 46 local lawyer groups, issued a statement saying the comments, quote, reflect a juvenile understanding of the role of an independent judiciary and undermined, quote, public confidence in the administration of justice in a dangerous and anti-democratic way. We would expect this sort of commentary from a MAGA Republican, not the Premier of Ontario, the Federation of Ontario Law Association's chair, Douglas Judson, said in an interview. Now, if that name rings a bell to you, <laughs> Douglas Judson, he is the gentleman that we had on our show during our Christmas week who brought the case to court that landed in a very important ruling, precedent-setting ruling, in Ontario, that you cannot, if you're accusing people randomly online of being groomers or pedophiles in Ontario, and then you're taken to court for that for defamation, you cannot use the defense, hey, I was just exercising my free speech, because the court has ruled that there is nothing that is of social value that comes from those types of comments. None. Zero. So this man also happens to be the president, the chair of the Federation of Ontario Law Associations. Put a pin in that because we'll come back to that very soon. Kelly McDermott, president of the Ontario Bar Association, said it was important for the province to remain to maintain a justice system independent from party loyalty, ideology, or government influence. Quote, 
The U.S. experience is a frequent reminder of the need to protect a court system that can be relied upon to make decisions on the basis of the law rather than ideology or partisan politics. This is fundamental to the rule of law. Adam Weisberg, vice president of the Criminal Lawyers Association, called the premier's comments about not appointing new Democrats or liberals, quote, disheartening, and said the organization was, quote, deeply disappointed with Mr. Ford's, quote, decision to politicize the judicial selection process. Veteran Toronto criminal defense lawyer Frank Adario said Mr. Ford's comments show, quote, he truly needs a civics lesson. I'll teach it to him. Yikes. Every judge that now takes the oath of office, people are going to look at that judge and go, what did they do to pass the litmus test of the premier? We should not be wondering about that. The premier's former deputy chief of staff, Matthew Bondi, was appointed to the chair of the 13-member Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee on February 1st. At one time, PC political aide Brock Vandrick, who has served as Mr. Ford's director of stakeholder relations, was appointed in December. For years, the Ford government has faced widespread criticism for changes it has made to the way the Ontario to, way, to sorry to the way Ontario appoints judges, alerting altering a process that dated back to 1988 and has been designed to minimize patronage. Passed in 2021, the changes give the province's attorney general more power over who sits on the advisory committee. He now approves all but the three members of the 13-strong panel. The changes also required the committee to present him with a short list of six candidates for each judiciary vacancy instead of two. Now, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association has a problem with this, as one would expect. It says it is deeply concerned Quote, in the view of the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, it's imperative that judicial appointments remain nonpartisan and based on merit to ensure that the charter right to bail is implemented in a way that upholds the rule of law. Uh -huh. Very, very, very yes. Because a lot of this has to do with something with bail, right? Because you heard Doug Ford in his comments, you know, what if this, you know, they break into your car eight times or that type of thing. You know, they've been doing that eight times. So this is all going back to the, the bail thing. This seems to be one thing on which the provincial conservatives and the federal conservatives are agreeing to attack Ish. the prime minister. Comments that we should modify the decision-making of justices of the peace or judges by injecting different concerns are deeply worrying and concerning. So this was representatives of the uh, Canadian Civil Liberties Association. And uh, yesterday in the press, um, Doug Ford has been described as not doubling, tripling down, but quintupling down on his pledge to hire like-minded judges to provincial courtrooms amid growing concern in the legal community about the independence of Ontario's judicial system. The Ford government has faced weeks of question and criticism after the Attorney General added two former employees to the Premier's office, both of whom are currently registered lobbyists. Well, 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 to the Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee. Ford, who has staunchly defended his position, showed no signs of backing down in the face of persistent pushback on Wednesday. Quote, I'm proud of it, Ford said during the question period. I'm proud to go out there and tell the people that are seeking, seeing violence in their homes, violence on the streets, violence in our subways, that we're going to get judges to keep these criminals in jail. Ontario Liberal MPP Stephen Blais said there was, quote, a clear conflict of interest in having former political staff who are currently registered to lobby sit on the advisory panel. Again, <coughs> Doug Justin with the Federal Federation of Ontario Law Association says Ford's comments on judicial appointments, quote, suggests there would be a hand on the scale during the court proceedings. <sighs> Apparently so something that conservatives all said that they were against when it came to SNC. These appointments are deliberately partisan. They go through a deliberately partisan litmus test to get on the court, and then suddenly we're supposed to accept that there are no partisan strings attaching to them, said Justin. It's almost a little bit too cute. Now, the Federation of Ontario Law Associations occupies one of the 13 seats on the Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee alongside other judges, lawyers, and members of the community. The Premier's latest comments come as the Law Society of Ontario works to fill its seat on the Advisory Committee, which helps with the process of appointing the judges in Ontario and why it is the law that they passed in 2021 allows them to pick 10 of the 13 and not the full 13. I don't know. I don't know what it is about the other three positions on that, that committee that made it so that they couldn't be touched by the law because I mean, Doug Ford doesn't strike me as the type of guy who wouldn't take it all if he could. And to that effect, 
Mr. Judson posted a tweet yesterday and it says, for those who haven't seen reporting on it in the media below is the full text of the statement of former provincial court chief justices, Lyndon Lennox and Boncolo concerning the premier attacks on the independence of the judiciary. So former chief justices, the courts in Ontario got together and read a state, wrote, wrote a statement. And I want to read this in to the record so to speak, because this is very, very, very important uh, that uh, Canadians be aware of it, particularly Ontarians, but Canadians too, because this might be coming soon to a conservative-led province near you. As former Chief Justices of the Ontario Court of Justice, we are concerned about potential political influence in the appointment of the judges and justices of the peace of the court. We are particularly concerned about the impact that the recent suggestion to politicize the appointment of judges could have on the court's Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee process or the quality of its recommendations and on the public's perception of the independence of the court. At the time of its creation in 1988, the Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee process for the appointment of judges to the Ontario Court of Justice was widely considered to be one of the best judicial appointment processes in North America. The JAAC process replaced what had been an opaque process for the appointment of provincial court justice that was widely thought to be highly politicized. JAAC was an independent advisory committee consisting of a balance of the government, law association, and judicial representatives. The committee developed a rigorous merit-based process of application, vetting, and interview in its search for the best candidates for each vacancy. The Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee developed criteria which emphasized professional excellence and personal sustainability rather than party affiliation, partisan affiliation and actively recruited for diversity. At the end of the process, the government was limited to appointing from a short ranked list of candidates recommended by the committee. One of the principal benefits of the process was to minimize the possibility of partisan political influence in judicial appointments. Until recently, the basic structure and functioning of the Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee has remained largely unchanged and has been honored by successive liberal, NDP, and conservative governments. The, ju the Judicial Appointments Advisory Committee remains a source of pride to the court and the legal community. There have now been over 500 appointments to the Ontario Court of Justice since the creation of the Advisory Committee. The Advisory Committee process has served the province and the people of Ontario well in providing knowledgeable, skilled, and highly qualified judges to the court. The Ontario Court of Justice is a court of which we are immensely proud and in which we believe the public can have confidence. The suggestion that there be a political litmus test for judicial appointments would return the court to practices that we would have thought had disappeared years ago. The introduction of political affiliation in the appointment process would be a disservice to the public, would diminish the court and its judiciary in the eyes of the public, and would undermine public confidence in the impartiality of the court, something which Doug Ford doesn't care about because he might potentially feel he'd find himself in front of a judge. I would suggest that is mere speculation on my part. We believe that the suggestion that judges and justices of the court could be subject to political influence in the exercise of their duties represents a fundamental misrepresentation of our judicial system and is highly unfair to the outstanding women and men who make up the independent judiciary of the court. We are also concerned that such a suggestion, if not corrected, may discourage otherwise qualified candidates from applying for appointment. The unique role of the courts in our democratic system of government is relatively easy to explain and to understand. Courts do not exist to implement government policy. Judges do not take orders from government. Judges and justices of the peace are independent judicial officers. They provide fair and impartial justice in accordance with the law to anyone who comes before them. They do so as guarantors of the constitutional right of every Canadian to be to an independent and impartial tribunal. In a system where the government appoints the judges and is also the principal litigator in the courts, the necessity of judicial independence to ensure impartiality is obvious. Let me repeat that because that is a very key sentence. In a system where the government appoints the judges and is also the principal litigator in the courts, and sometimes principal defendant, because the government is not always the litigator, Sometimes they are defending. There are cases brought against it. The necessity of judicial independence to ensure impartiality is obvious. In ethical principles for justice, sorry, in ethical principles for judges, the Canadian Judicial Council defines the fundamental role of a judge. Quote, a judge must be and be seen to be 
free to decide honestly and impartially on the basis of the law and the evidence without external pressure or influence and without fear of interference from anyone, end quote. From that, it follows that any judge or justice of the peace who bowed to political influence or to political pressure would be in clear breach of their oath of office. Signed, Sidney B. Linden, Chief Justice, Ontario Court of Justice, 1990 to 1999, Brian W. Lennox, Chief Justice, Ontario Court of Justice, 1999 to 2007, and Anne Marie E. Bancalo, Chief Justice, Ontario Court of Justice, 2007 to 2015. So basically, every Chief Justice of the Ontario Court of Justice since 1990. Mm -hmm. not including the present one who cannot make political statements because they are the current Chief Justice of the Ontario Court. That's why the current one is not there. Yay, civics. Have signed this. They are unanimous. A three-panel court, so to speak, of former Chief Justices of Ontario Court of Justice have said, uh, yeah, no, Well, that should be, you know, the gist of it. Case closed. Right there. Case closed, check and mate, whatever. Stop, Game set stop match. Stop spending money. Stop spending our money. Yeah. Do the right thing. Yes. Be a yeah. man. Do the right thing. Yes. Mr. Grizzly. Russell Peters bit, by the way, so don't get mad at me. Do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. Okay. I, right, I just like turned to the chat because I was reading from an article, so I wasn't following the chat, and uh, I turned my head, and the first thing I saw was Kid Donald Dan going, I ain't dressing in chaps, and I want to know what came before that. <laughs> uh, you'd, uh, you'd have to scroll through. Um, <laughs> buttless chaps? Buttless chaps. You don't have buttless to say that. Buttless chaps. You don't, you don't have to say that. That's redundant. Yeah, there, there are no chaps, and there are no butts in chats. There, they chaps, are, by definition, are buttless. buttless. Yeah, by definition. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's that's the thing. Ah, ah chaps. Sorry, yeah, I had a moment there. That really chapped my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had a moment there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, saw that, I saw that. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do. <laughs> All right, kids and cops. Ah, oh, man. Oh, we were a little cheeky today. Just a little che ah, cheeky yeah. chaps. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> Accidental humor. <laughs> as George Carlin would say. Today, <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show because we enjoyed making it for you. <laughs> Remember sharing is caring. <laughs> I can't stop giggling now. <laughs> we've talked <laughs> we've talked about bazungas <laughs> well, and butts. I think I'm gonna name this bazungas and butts. Uh, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, because we had a fun, <laughs> we've had a fun time making this one for you. Uh, remember, sharing is caring, and word about this priceless. And you have the mouse from which we want uh, the good words to come out. So please, please, please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And if you would like to not miss an episode, you do not have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl who sponsors our pod page. If you scan the QR code right under my chin right there, that will bring you to our podge page. See, I can't even say pod. I'm saying podge page now because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm too giggly. To our pod page site, that's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver. All the lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. Do not go to podcage.com. And do not go to podgepage.com. We cannot guarantee what it is that you will see if you go there. No idea. <laughs> if you would like to help us out in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to our True North Eager Beaver Media YouTube site where we have buttons for you to play with. Tweak our buttons. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> I got nothing for that. I don't even know what to say. I literally don't have a response. I'm like, uh, we're just playing. Someone is. Like, share, and subscribe. Click all the buttons. That helps us out. And if you would like to support us in other ways, then that QR code that is right by Mr. Grizzly's beautiful and gorgeous dome brings you to 
our coffee page where you will find the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund where our good friends, Café and Chocolat Chaud and Bloody César and Guinness, who's a great lad, wonderful guy, help us produce and write and deliver this product to you. So Um, anything that you can donate, we are grateful for. Speaking I just of noticed. I just noticed a thread online here, real quickly. A uh, thread online. It was like uh, five drinks to get to know me, and they're like Starbucks, Jade, this, that, and I'm, I'm like, does five pints of Guinness count? <laughs> five pints of Guinness. <laughs> so yes, that's coffee.com, ko hyphen fi dot com slash eager beaver lowercase letters, all in one word. And there you can make your contribution. Everything is donated. Get saucy boobs out, chaps on. <laughs> I think I like the sound of that. Ah, that reminds me of memories. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. I'm not going there. What are you wearing? Tits and teeth. And <laughs> I'm shirtless they, and I'm wearing a smile. That's what they tell figure skaters. <laughs> i'm serious that's yep literally it's true oh man jeez i'm gee I, i'm i don't know yeah I, i'm being a very naughty beaver today um because democracy is something that you do please take some time to write your letters to your media your senators your mlas your mpps your mps Give a call to the constituency office, ask for a meeting, tell them it's time for performance review. If there's a Mm. cause that's really dear to your heart, you care about the homeless, you care about a national food program, all of those things, write, let them know you want it. Let them know that not only that your vote depends upon it, but if you don't get it, that you will dedicate every wake and aisle to make sure that they do not get reelected or elected in the first place. Mm. That usually gets people's attention. All right. Um... From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, it can be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. And uh, when the occasion arises and people step over the line, don't be afraid to throw a little backbone in there. Let your backbone slide. slide. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? Uh... I don't. I don't think I do today. I'm. I'm exhausted right now. The medication's kicking my butt. Uh, it's doing its thing, and I'm feeling better each day. But I'm still far from good. But that being said, uh, pay pay attention to your health. <laughs> eat your vitamins. Eat 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 healthy meals. Take some vitamins. Drink plenty of water. And apparently, eat a lot of soup. Soup, glorious soup. Not a big soup fan. <laughs> uh, and since, you know, we're, I've, I've delved into a couple of Broadway songs today, how about one more that goes with the theme of the show? Uh, Memories <laughs> like the corners of my mind. Anyway, Mr. Grizzly, <laughs> cue the cock. <laughs> you are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. We got the kids uh, giving us some uh, tips for uh, eating soup while wearing chaps, like make sure the soup isn't too hot. Mm. And isn't that tattoo you have say soup? No, it says strength. <laughs> I, have uh, a, we... I have an Easter egg for you. That, that, that's going to be, uh, uh, Danielle Smith is going to need to be sitting down when she reads this. 
from Royal Bank, Royal Bank of Canada, Canada's largest bank, says it's stepping up efforts to reduce the climate impact of its lending with a strategy to plow billions of dollars into decarbonization measures and triple its lending for renewable energy. Oh. Well. You're going to miss out on a whole bunch of money, Danny. That's just sometimes the way it rolls. Oh. See. And uh, before we go, I uh, just wanted to put a little message out. I was at my curling club yesterday, and a lovely lady with whom I curl every now and then, named Jan, stopped me as I was going back to the change room to let me know that a friend of hers has been listening to the show and likes it. I was quite complimentary about it, and uh, I just wanted to know, whoever you are, because I don't know your name, that Jan did give me the message. Thank you so much. You bought a big, goofy, toothy grin to my face yesterday and uh, i really appreciate that all right kids have a good day i'll see you